Our resident commentator on the passing scene is award-winning author Harlan Ellison. When we call him award-winning, that's an understatement. Harlan has won more awards for his 58 books, more than 1,100 stories, articles, essays, and columns than any other living fantasist. His film criticism has been appearing for the last eight years in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, and like our commentaries here, is called Harlan Ellison's Watching. You know, basically I'm an old fart. I'm 58 years old and I'm in sight of the grave. And as the shadow deepens over me, I think back to some of the lost treasures. The lost treasures that live here, here in memory, here in the perfect video cassette, rather than in phosphor dot immediacy on the idiot tube and are gone forever. I think back to the wonderful books and the wonderful movies that I've seen that no one pays any attention to today because of cultural illiteracy or the fact that they've forgotten immediately. I remember, I remember when I was a kid and we would go for a ride on a Sunday afternoon, my mom and dad and I in the old Plymouth. In those days you just went for a ride, man. You didn't go anywhere. You just went for a ride. And we would listen to the radio because they had great radio shows on. And my favorite was a show called Quiet Please, which was created by one of the great unsung heroes of fantasy fiction, a man named Willis Cooper. And the show began with the announcer, Ernest Chappell, who was one of those announcers whose voice could stop you as you went through a room and you would be mesmerized for a moment. And he would begin by saying, quiet please, quiet please. And on this Sunday, he said a line that I have never forgotten. He said, there is a place just five miles from where you now stand that no human eye has ever seen, five miles down. And the chill that went up my spine that Sunday afternoon is the chill I just felt. Those lost treasures and other treasures that are lost to us because of the need for gimme, 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 now, 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 what book was written this week, what's the latest thing on TV, are the treasures that we need to remember. I'm going to give you some of them. Look them up. This is good for your soul. Don't argue with me. When they take a convention roster of films to show, all right, we've seen The Thing from Another World a million times. We've seen The Day the Earth Stood Stills a million times. We've seen Star Wars, God knows, a million times. But what about Seconds? What about that gorgeous film based on David Ely's book, shot in black and white by James Wong Howe, with, of all people, Rock Hudson? This astonishing story of a man who gets to relive his life. You've never seen it? Oh, go look up Seconds. How about Dark Crystal? The only fantasy that has worked, all the rest of them don't work. Willow, Excalibur, all the rest of them, they suck. But, but Dark Crystal works. What about Return to Oz that got so bad rap by all the critics? Return to Oz, it ain't Judy Garland, it ain't hip hop, but Return to Oz is in the tradition of the original Oz books. Dune, don't sell it short, you watch years to come. It will have a vision that others will say, that was a film. Then you got Curse of the Demon, directed by Jacques Tourneur. Oh, based on M.R. James casting the runes, there are scenes in that will blow you out of your socks. If the Lindsay Anderson movie with Malcolm McDowell, how about The Last Days of Man on Earth, based on Michael Moorcock's Jerry Cornelius stories, and The First Men on the Moon, the Ray Harryhausen film, with that wonderful Lionel Jeffries performance. Yeah, those are great films. You can get them. They're all on video cassette. And writers... Don't talk to me about Lois McMaster Bujold and her writing this week. Don't talk to me about the latest Star Trek novel. I don't want to know from that. When you tell me that you've read Charles Beaumont and Walter M. Miller and Cordwainer Smith and Murray Leinster and Henry Kuttner and Richard Matheson and C.M. Cornbluth and Lee Brackett and Stanley Weinbaum and Jack Finney and Avram Davidson, many of whom are still alive, when you tell me you've read their great stuff, then... Then, and only then, can you tell me about the latest Jerry Purnell military novel that was issued by Bain Books. Until that time, I'm going to look on you as an illiterate.